would be inadvisable, I'd suggest, to describe any of this lot as an African queen. This is Zambia, the real Zambia, absolutely miles from anywhere. And after a morning of math, social science and double English, sound familiar? It's now lunchtime in 40 odd degrees of heat. And you know, pay attention in class and train hard and maybe you one day could win the Metrex trophy for the world's strongest man. We know six of the finalists already. Here's the lineup for the next heat. Two of this lot are going to join them. We're going to start this heat at the Royal Livingston Hotel with the Farmer's Walk. These two giant anvils weigh 120 kilograms each and they have to be carried up and down a 70 metre course. Now the man who's going to guide us through all the events this time around is the former world's strongest man himself and that's Jamie Reeves. Tell us about this. This is all about grip strength we know, but it's about leg strength too. Every step, this anvil is going to be coming loose, so you've really got to grip and it's a race against the clock. Now 120 kilograms is like carrying one of you in each hand. Or a baby hippo. What? No monkey? Well, here's Paul Dickinson and a friend. The unmistakable figure of Glenn Ross, three times Britain's strongest man, 200 kilos body weight. And John Valgue Williams is pretty big too. His dad comes from Norfolk, but he's representing Iceland. And finally, Steve Kirrett of the United States, the USA's strongest man this year. I just wonder how much the temperature is going to affect Glenn Ross. Desperate to get in the final. And away we go. Uh, Glenn off to a bit of a slow start on the far side and Steve Kirrett absolutely flying at the moment. John Valier Williams and Glenn Ross neck and neck at the moment but it's the USA in the lead. And this is a very useful time as well, just one foot needs to go over that line. No dropped anvil so far, 264 pounds and Steve Kirrett is coming away. He's further and further ahead and Glenn Ross has almost stopped at the opposite end of the course and Kirit is oh, slowing, Glenn Ross has dropped his anvils and Kirit way. is going off course now then a chance for Valgia Williams to catch up but the Icelander has gone down all as way, well so surely this will be a victory for the American all all just over the line, absolutely exhausted John Valgia Williams all struggling all a wee bit here there is a time limit of 75 seconds but I don't think either of these seconds. two guys All will way, bother about that. John Valgier Williams is finished in second place, 63.25, and poor old Glenn Ross is having a tough, tough time. He's 200 kilos in body weight, that's a fraction over what he was last year, and he's run out of time. That's a disappointing start for Glenn Ross. Great support from the crowd, though. So what expectations do you come here with? I just want to do as well as I can in every event. We'll see what happens. I, I have no control over what anyone else does. So just do the best I can in every event. And I just try to be happy with that. Well, here goes our first competitor in the next group, Vidas Plakaitis. 
the Baltic State Strongman for 2003. And then Vasil Verastyuk, second in Ukraine's Strongest Man competition this year. His brother is an Olympic shot putter. And the familiar figure of Hugo Girard of Canada, a former finalist in World's Strongest Man. So two first-timers and a very experienced competitor right. in Girard nearest the camera. And Girard is away. And so is Verastiuk. And look at Verastiuk. He's almost taking off. Girard's got a bit of work to do. And I'll tell you what, the Ukrainian is sprinting, literally. One foot over and back he goes. This is tremendous by Verastiuk. Well, his brother is an Olympic and World Championship shot putter. And this is Verastiuk's claim to fame here in strongman oh, competition. Oh, Hugo oh, Girard is a little bit behind, but that is a winning time of 26.59. Girard in second place, and I think Plakaitis will get third. Yes, he does, quite easily, in fact. That was tremendous, but Verastiuk won it by a street. How pleased are you with that performance in the first event? No, yeah. <laughs> Я не накаплю не здивований, тому що, в принципі, я сподівався на такий результат. A big man expecting big things of himself, but Glenn Ross, he desperately wants to make it through to the final, but that's not the way to go about it. Well, it started happening last year, but the strength and depth in Eastern Europe plain for all to see after that first event. <laughs> This next event is the squat. It starts off at 245 and finishes at 345 kilograms. For all you pint drinkers, that's 53 stones. Well, whether you're used to the metric system or pounds, it's certainly a lot of weight. And here's the heaviest man in this year's World's Strongest Man, Glenn Ross, who desperately needs big points now. Well, he's renowned as a big, big squatter, that's for sure. So, what can Glenn do in his second event in the heat of this year's World's Strongest Man? Very deep and very strong on the way up. So the first barrel comes on with a bit of a clunk. And the second barrel there, that makes the weight 573 pounds. And this is looking good for Glenn Ross. In the event that any of the other strong men complete the seven lifts all together with the six barrels, it's all down to the stopwatch and Glenn's looking pretty useful here, I tell you. This is a good performance. But he was last in the farmer's walk. He's hardly blowing at all and that is tremendous by Glenn Ross. The clock will be stopped. He wasn't sure whether he finished or not. Who's the daddy now? Well, for the time being, Glenn Ross is. Back with a bang. Oh, I definitely. Um, if it comes to static strength, I am the daddy, the daddy of the world. And uh, I challenge anybody in the squad deadlift now pressing. I want to prove a point to everybody. Static Ram is the world's strongest man. Glenn Ross setting the mark for everybody else to follow. Four for Williams. Next up, it was Kirit, and he could only manage five in 25.31. And following him, it was the turn of Blakaitis, and the man from Eastern Europe, seven, but in 37.68. So here goes Hugo Girard. And the Canadian, well, he's being flagged up as a potential champion this year, but there's still a long way to go. That was good. The first barrel goes in, 260 kilos, made it look very easy. And that is way over 500 pounds. That was over 600 pounds. Well, Hugo Girard, he's got one of the biggest chests of any of the strong men. But he's looking very tight this year. I think he's lost a bit of body fat. And that will have made him all the more fit to cope with the demands of all of these strength contests. One last barrel. Now then, can he challenge the time of Glenn Ross? I don't think he can. That's 35.71. So Ross is still two seconds in the lead. Girard, though, in second place for the time being. Seems like all the good squatters are all in the same heat. So uh, I knew a Glenn on that would be uh, almost unbeatable. I wasn't feeling uh, right at first. Switched my food a bit. But uh, hopefully I did seven reps. So that's what I needed to score a good point. Well, I think he will get good points as we look at our last competitor, Verastiuk. 
take the way. very precise about where he puts his feet for this squatting event. Squat! And here we go. Now you would expect oh. a shot putter to do well at this. And not just his brother who's a world class shot putter, this guy has put the shot over 20 metres. And only one British athlete has done that so far this year. And that is Carl Myers Co. So Verastiuk will have done this event many, many times in the gym, but never with a weight that increases after each squat. That is what makes this difficult. That is number six. He needs number seven. So here we go, those knees tightly wrapped just to protect the joint. If he fails this, Glenn Ross has definitely won it. And Verastiuk staggers out from beneath the apparatus there. But Great Britain have won one. Great effort by Glenn Ross. Extraordinary feats of strength by so many of those athletes. But two seconds, the margin of Glenn Ross's victory. And it means that this group really is wide open. Glenn Ross at his best there, but he and the rest must know that with Hugo Gerard in that sort of form, they're all just playing for second place. When in Zambia, you must meet the real African chief. But don't forget to bring some gifts. Yeah. Here we are more or less like here. So It's a great village, never had so many friends. In a country of just 10 million people, there are 72 different dialects, but nowhere in the world can there be so many Zs. That's Zimbabwe, this is Zambia, that's the Zambezi, Zakomo means thank you, and Zingati, Lemma Tren, means how much does that train weigh? It weighs 1544 kilograms, that's 15 and a half tons. This is a big one, and it's going to want some pulling. Train pull! The Victoria Falls Bridge filling up with spectators for this train pull. And I don't know about the weight of it, but this is one of the heaviest things around here, Glenn Ross. And after that victory in the last event, if he can get another one Are here, he really will be back in with a shout of qualifying for the final at the halfway stage. Now, here we go. Glenn Ross wearing gloves. Those rails are very, very hot indeed, so he won't want to damage his hands. He's got to stay low and pull consistently. It's a little bit jerky. And that train, 15 and a half tons, I reckon that's about five giraffes worth. And there are plenty of those around here, especially in the game reserve just up the road. But Glenn Ross is struggling. He's put on a tiny bit of weight since last year. Not really enough to affect his mobility. And he is just relying on his body weight at the moment. And actually, this is unbelievable. He's just come to a grinding halt. Now, come on, Glenn. He really has to drive the legs. Stay low, but those hips are too high. We've seen one or two competitors in the past. They've almost been horizontal. And Glenn is just inching it forward. Only five seconds to go before the whistle goes. Now, come on, Glenn. Just a couple of metres more, but the whistle has gone. And the tape measure will come out. It's around about 14 metres. And that is desperately disappointing from a former British champion. Um, absolutely unbelievable in this heat. Like. There's 48 here up here at the minute. That's just pure madness. Especially for a 400 pound man, you know. Um, as soon as I heard that they took a rope away on the ladder, it was just going to be ladder and rails. I remember from my head, I just, it just doesn't sleep in that way. I'm more of a harness and rope guy. And because uh, basically you can't practice that way, you know what I mean? And uh, with my heavy body weight going like a monkey, it doesn't suit me. That was really hard work for Glenn Ross. Too hard, you might say. Hard too for Williams, 59-78 for the Icelander. Steve Kirrett, he was happier. 44-18 was his time. And he was then followed by the man from Lithuania. Blakaitis coming home, 27-43. Well, that was an excellent time by Blakaitis to go into the lead. 27.43 for Verastiuk to try and beat. Are you ready? So here we go. He said yes, and he meant it, my goodness. Already driving, keeping the hips low, pulling with the arms. 
And this guy, a former shot putter, of course, you'd expect him to have big, strong arms, but look at the pace he's setting now. He really is pumping those legs and picking up pace all the time. There's about five meters to go, and this is going to be exceptional. And Verastiuk stops the clock at 25.44. That is a good lead, and there's only Hugo Girard left to challenge it. Another good performance for the Ukraine. 25 seconds is an unbelievable time. Did he know he was going that fast? Так само, як і на фоу Жамрев, я в принципі сподівався на такий результат, тому що дома ми тоже тренувалися з такими з такими вагонами, але у нас було 2-3 вагони вагою по 60 по 70 тонн, так що в принципі на хороший результат я завжди сподівався. Well, you can't imagine anybody practicing at King's Cross, can you? But Hugo Girard the Canadian is the last athlete to try and challenge that magnificent time of Verastiuk, 25.44. And Hugo Girard, well, he's done this event a few times. Oh, he nearly fell off there. Look at the size of this guy's shoulders. He's got a massive 60-inch chest. Tremendously powerful legs as well, and it is pretty good. We've got Verastiuk at just over 25 seconds. Then Blakaitis, 27.43. And poor old Glenn Ross is languishing down in last place at the moment. But Hugo Girard is over 30 seconds. That is not good news for the Canadian. It's way over 30 seconds, 34.68. So the Canadian will finish in third place in the train pool. So Eastern Europe taking the first two places there ahead of Girard. But Glenn Ross was the only man not to complete the course. And he's in trouble now. There's just two points separating the top three. Well, Glenn Ross has harboured ambitions of getting to the final for so long, but after that train pull, it looks like the big three are getting away. In Scotland, if you lifted a stone, you was allowed to wear an eagle's feather in your cap. Let's see how many of our strongmen will be wearing five. The five stones lifted in order onto the highest drum and then the heaviest stone onto the lowest one. It's going to be a very big test indeed for Glenn Ross and for Blakaitis next to him. Now Glenn Ross has done the fifth stone in the past. So if he can do it this time, well again, he'll get big points. So here we go. Douglas Edmonds sends them on their way and Blakaitis just popping it up there but he's had, got a bit of difficulty and it's going away into the crowd. My goodness, Glenn Ross has got the second stone up and Blakaitis, I think he may have hit his head with a stone on that occasion. Well, a bit of drama on the far side but let's keep looking at Glenn Ross. He's on to stone number four, rolling it around. That's 140 kilos, 309 pounds. And meanwhile, Blakaitis has gone back to try and get that first stone up. And Glenn Ross is on the final stone and Blakaitis has dropped it off again. So no luck for the man on the far side. Well, this is remarkable. Ross has lifted this fifth and final stone. But in the past, they've had the benefit of sticky stuff on the arms. That's not allowed this time. So what on earth went wrong? None of us have really practiced without a little bit of resin. With resin, I put that up three or four times, but it just wasn't happening today. But log lift your fancy your chances, won't you? I'll um, win that. Never say die from Ross. He'd have been encouraged by Kirit managing four in 31.4. That was slower than him. But then Williams, the Icelander, four in 24.12 seconds. Hugo Gerard. Well, Hugo Gerard is very experienced at these Atlas Stones. I'm not sure about Verastia. But the overall leader going so well. Here's the ready. one on the far side. And away we go. Oh, Girard almost pushed it up with his chin there. That was incredible. And Girard is flying at the moment. The lead is held at the moment by John Balgi Williams of Iceland. 24.12. And I think Girard is ahead at the moment. Verastiuk is just a shade behind. And already Girard has gone into the lead. So here goes Girard with that stone, and this is number four for Verastia. 25.5 there for the Ukrainian, and Girard is so close to getting number five up. Oh, that is desperate. 
And Girard has had enough. I think he realizes that he's won. 17.78 seconds. And Verastiuk at the moment is lying in third place. Oh, he's getting very cross with himself. And that is it for both men. A little bit of drama at the end. And Girard has won. I knew a, a fast four would be very good. So on the fifth one, went out there, give it a shot. And uh, just not quite enough, but uh, I don't want to risk any anything, you know. What is going to be important to make all five going to be in the final. So right now, I think uh, the tactic works. Well, five of them got four stones up, which meant it all came down to speed of mind and movement. Girard the quickest of all, and he leads with two events still to go. The guys not using glue had a major bearing on the outcome there, and Canada and the Ukraine are in the box seat with just two events to go. There's a team of three of us come from England, and then we have about half a dozen helpers from the country that we're visiting. We tend to be the first ones to arrive on location because we have to set up all the equipment, and we're very often the last ones away. We try and theme some of the equipment to reflect the local culture and surroundings. This year being in Africa, I've chosen some of the colors and designs from the, the local African art. Most of the work involves getting all the equipment back into good order because it takes quite a bashing with the way the, the athletes handle it. So everything has to be cleaned and repainted and remarked so that it all looks nice to be on the television. Log lift! Each one of these logs has got to be lifted overhead to arm's length. It's all about upper body and shoulder power. Now Glenn Ross seems to think he's got the strongest upper body here, but I'm sure you'll go Gerard will have something to say about that. A real test for yeah, Glenn good. Ross. And you heard what he had to say at the end of the last event. He was going to win this event, but can he? And his arms didn't look terribly straight there, but the referee says yes, OK. So it's on to number two, 125 kilos. And that looks better. And this is as much a test of stamina as anything else. Victoria Falls in the background looking absolutely magnificent. And that is a good push from Glenn Ross. He never uses his legs. Such is the strength of his arms and shoulders. Now this is number four, 155 kilos. The equivalent of two 12 stone people. Now can he put his money where his mouth is? You get the feeling with the likes of Hugo Girard around, he's gonna have to. Rolls it up his chest, his considerable chest, and pushes. Oh, he's inches away. It looks as though it's okay, but the referee hasn't signaled yet. The referee has actually said no. And Glenn Ross is looking bemused, saying, what, me? Surely that was a good lift. Well, I can't hear what Glenn is actually saying, but he's saying no more. He's run out of time anyway. And I think there might be an inquest into that. Glenn Ross is saying, I did lock out. It was successful. What do you think, to get it up? Did they get it up? What do you think? The camera will tell you everything. I mean, my arms are fully locked out. I even straightened my feet for him and I looked at him. And then he went down. I mean, what's that all about? Well, big controversy for Glenn Ross. Less so for Williams. He only managed two in 1874. Plakaitis, the man from Lithuania, three in 27, 87, and he was then followed by Steve Kirit from America, three in 24, 56. So here we go with Verastiuk, and it's Steve Kirit of the USA, who's just edged ahead of Glenn Ross, 24.56 for three lifts, and Verastiuk is absolutely steaming at the moment. Look at this. Down says Douglas Edmonds. And Dougie Edmonds, one of the most fair referees, I have to say, in Strongman, along with Jamie Reeves. And this is good lifting by Verastiuk, maintaining his place. Just one point behind Hugo Girard at the top of the table. Now, come on, he wants a bit of support. So the Ukrainian, great competitor, good athlete, but can he get number four? He's certainly in the lead at the moment. Oh, my goodness up halfway then down again 
And just look how much these guys are bending their backs. That's close. Very close, but I don't think he's going to be given it. Yes, he has. Oh, I thought he was a bit unsteady, but Verastiuk's gone into the lead. 49.72. Basil, many congratulations. It was almost too easy for you. Well, in principle, yes. For me, 155. There's no problem, in principle, for the log lift. So, no problem, he says. Well, we'll have to wait and see how Hugo Girard gets on. Oh, that was good, 100 kilos. The next one, 125. Just as easy. And the crowd really rising to Hugo Girard, Canada's strongest man for many, many years. Massive upper body development. Can he do 155? 341 pounds. And he can! And that was so easy! He's won an event ahead of Verastiuk, and that means Glenn Ross finishes down in fourth place. But Gerard took that very easily indeed. The target all along was to get to the final. Now you've got it, what's the target? <sighs> of course it's to win the title. You're not coming here thinking about looking at second place, you're looking at first place. It won't be easy in the final, it never is. So, we saw what happened. Do you, do you guys think he can win the World Strongest? Yeah! <laughs> With that kind of support, everything is possible. One of the great things about this year's competition, the way the Zambian people have completely embraced these giant men in their midst for a couple of weeks, and there's confirmation that this heat is now over. So a controversial end to Glenn Ross's challenge as the giants from Canada and the Ukraine power their way into the final. Six men, six tyres, flip them 20 metres to the finish. The climax to Heat 4 and of course Hugo Girard and Verastiuk nearest the camera have already made it through to the final. There is Girard, absolutely magnificent. Verastiuk just creeping into the lead on the far side, almost unnoticed. John Valgier Williams, the tallest man in this heat. He's going into the lead and Steve Kirt of the USA next to him go well. That is Williams. And now can he finish off with a little bit of glory here? Yes, he can. That's victory for Iceland. Kirit for the USA in second place. And then in third place, Hugo Girard. And Verastiuk just following him closely. Just. And poor old Glenn Ross is struggling. But we know who won there. A good victory for Valgier Williams. How much does it mean to you to be in the final? Well, at this moment, for me, it's more than everything. I don't say that it's all что це і все, але та мрія, до якої я йшов, на даний момент збувається. Так що я думаю, що все буде добре. Did you watch the program on television for many years and now you are part of the final? No. So we're not big in the Ukraine yet. There's confirmation of a consolation victory for the Maverick Icelander Williams ahead of Kirit and Girard, and there's confirmation of what you knew already. So which of these two qualifiers do you think has got the best chance of actually coming out on top? I think Hugo's never going to have a better chance than what he's got this time. He's been trying for six years and the events really suit him and he looks in good shape. He looks like he's lost a few kilos in body weight, so he looks good. As for Vasil, um, he's a new guy, I don't know much about him, but he looked pretty impressive there. Four heats down, one to go. These are the eight men through so far to the final of the Metrex Trophy for the world's strongest man. Time now for our special Christmas edition of Who Wants Fame as an Idol Strongman. And Hugo, what are you going to sing? I'm going to sing Petit Papa Noel. Magnifique. Petit Papa Noel, quand tu descendras du ciel, avec des jouets par milliers, n'oublie pas mes petits souliers. 